The Pint of Science, brought to you by the Faculty of Science, Charles University in Prague, Department of Chemistry, sponsored by the Pilsner Brewery. So, uh, I decided uh, today, and this is in fact for the very first time after a long time, not to use uh, some classical presentations and to use the whiteboard. In some way, I believe that for 15 minutes, uh, talk or presentation is uh, good enough, so uh, you will see. Uh, <clears throat> I decided to talk today about two most, probably most important type of non-covalent interaction. This is the subject I'm doing all my life, non-covalent interactions. And first, I would like to talk about uh, the most important, most frequent, most best known, and this is the hydrogen bonding. This is probably well known for you. And in the first part, I will only repeat what is well known, and then I will show you why I'm talking about it, because even here, there is something uh, uh, quite new story, very recent. The second part will be the halogen bonding, which is quite a new, new type of non covalent interaction with, with probably very important applications. So let me first start with the, with the, with the hydrogen bond. So what is the hydrogen bond? You remember from the freshman courses that this is the bond between electron deficient uh, uh, proton with the uh, place with surplus of electron. For example, like this one. The electron deficient uh, proton uh, is created when it is covalently bound to the electronegative element, like oxygen here. And this, this could be, for example, lone electron pairs or pi electrons uh, there. Uh, hydrogen bond is known for a long time, for almost for 100 years. It is very important. First of all, the properties of water, and this is, the, this is uh, a very important medium because life was created not in Pilsner Urquell, but in water. So, and water, you remember, has some very special properties. The most important of them is the boiling point. Boiling point of water is 100 degrees. But this is very special, very exceptional. If it doesn't exist hydrogen bonding, the boiling point of the water should be minus 20 or minus 30 degrees. So there is 100 Celsius degrees. What is behind? The answer is clear. Very special, very strong attraction between two water molecules. So I started here. So this is the water dimer. And we have a very strong interaction between those, those two molecules, about 5 kilocalories per mole. The covalent bond is about 100. So 5 kilocalories per mole. For non-covalent interaction, it is very, very strong. Why this is important? Structure and properties of water, but also structure and properties of biomacromolecules. Structure of DNA, we know why it is important. Hydrogen bonding are playing a very, import, very important role. What is behind this extra stabilization here? So first of all, we know that both molecules has a dipole moment, and dipole-dipole interaction is important. Is it enough? Not. It is not enough to explain all the properties of in the in the water dimer. So what are the how to measure? What is the technique? I am now talking about the experiment, and the most important is the infrared, and the band which corresponds to the OA stretch becomes after forming the hydrogen bond becomes broader, more intensive. And what is most important is shifted to the red. And this is the well-known red shift which made the hydrogen bond clear. And if experimental, you find the red shift in the gas phase, in the liquid phase, or any phase. If you have a, a red shift of the OA stretching influence, it's completely clear that we have a complex formation there. This is, in fact, even the fingerprint of, uh, uh, of uh, hydrogen bond formation. So once again, it became broader, more intensive. We are not able to explain this more, uh, the higher intensity in, in the complex on the basis of dipole-dipole. We must admit that there exists something more. And here theory help. And we have a charge transfer from lone electron pair, which is going to the OH bond. The occupied space is filled. So we must go to antibonding. We can't go to bonding. We must go to antibonding orbitals. This is the antibonding orbital. If we increase the antibond, uh, if we increase the electron density in antibonding orbital, the bond became weaker, is elongated, 
And as a consequence, we have a redshift of the uh, OSH in frequency. Up to now, you can say, okay, why are you telling us the story? We have learned it in the freshman courses. What I am trying to say, that this is not true, what I mentioned up to now. This is not the only presentation of the hydrogen bond, the redshift. And this is <coughs> what we have shown by chance about, about uh, uh, 15 years uh, ago, that we investigated a system between pi electrons, so this was benzene, and the proton donor, like chloroform or fluoroform. So here we have the uh, expected of a hydrogen bond between proton and pi electrons. Here we found the complex formation. The energy here is about 5, energy here is about 3. So it is comparable, the strength is uh, comparable. But then came the surprise. We expected that there must be CH pi hydrogen bond. If it is CH pi hydrogen bond, the CH bond should be elongated, and the CH frequency should be shifted to the red. We found completely opposite. The CH bond was contracted, and the uh, frequency was shifted to the blue. <coughs> How it is possible? <coughs> This is not the hydrogen bond. It was also not easy to publish the, the paper because first it was necessary to convince, like now I am trying to convince you, so it was necessary to convince the editor and, and the referee that we are right. And so uh, finally we succeed only uh, the most important when we make for that system experiment. <coughs> this experiment is extremely easy. Infrared spectroscopy in this building, you have a, a bunch of uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy. Uh, if you make the gas phase of benzene and gas phase of chloroform, first you measure CH stage of the chloroform in isolated phase, and you, then you measure the same in the experiment. This is a question of half an hour. And then you will find that the CH is really shifted not to the red as expected, it's shifted to the blue. And this was the beginning uh, of what we later uh, named the uh, blue shifting hydrogen bond. So here everything is opposite. This bond length is elongated, this is contracted. This stretching frequency is shifted to the lower energy, to the red. This, shift, this uh, frequency is to, to the blue, to the high. Intensity here is going up, intensity here is going down. It's completely everything is different. On the be very beginning we believe that we have some singularity. But later we have found that almost the same amount as hydrogen bond, we have this improper blue shifting hydrogen bond. And then, having an experiment in hand, the IUPAC, International Unit for Pure and Applied Chemistry, realized that this is probably a good idea. And they, they uh, decided it's necessary to have a new definition of the hydrogen bond. So not that the red shift is the fingerprint, but another situation can happen as well. UPAC is working as our parliament, nominate a committee. But in this case, committee should find some conclusion. So the committee uh, uh, met several times in Pisa, in Italy, which is a good idea. Why not to be there? And after several meetings, we came to conclusion. And the conclusion was published in Pure and uh, Applied uh, Chemistry in 2011. There is a, here is the new definition of the hydrogen bond, which is now uh, uh, printed in a textbook, which is simply saying that the formation of the hydrogen bonded complex, like this one, and this, could be accompanied with the red shift, with the blue shift, or with no any shift at all. So the complex is every time formed. It could be a very strong complex. It could be between 5, 10, or 15 kilocalories per mole. But unfortunately, now you are not able to detect by infrared whether it is this, that, or simply zero. This is, this is, uh, this is uh, quite possible as well. So this is the first part about the story, which is 100 years old, but uh, became uh, a rather fresh one in, in about the last uh, 10 years. Now let's go further. Let's try to. Uh, uh, see what is new with hydrogen bonding. It was believed that doesn't exist anything, it couldn't exist anything more. But very recently, in crystal, in the crystal piece now, such a situation of, they were found crystals where two hydrogen were very close together. Very close, it means less than two angstrom. 
if you make the, uh, any calculation, you realize that if two, if two hydrogens are so close together that the force is enormous, and such a bond cannot exist. But it was found experimentally. It is there. How to explain it? And now the theory again helped. Explanation is easy. Please go back here. In, in this case, X is oxygen. It means electronegative element. If X is electronegative element, as we mentioned here, it removes the electron and the proton is partially positively charged. But please, if you look at the periodic table, you will find that almost half of the element is not electronegative, but electropositive in connection. If this one is electropositive, then of course the hydrogen became negative. And what was very strange and was unbelievable to explain is simply because we have very strong electrostatic attraction between positive and negative hydrogen. One example for electropositive element, boron, all the uh, alkali metals, all the transition metals, and so on. This case now, which exists very uh, frequently in crystal structure, you have an element, has also some, play also some role in uh, uh, chemistry or biology. And just one example. So I mentioned borane. So if you have a, a hydrogen bound to borane, like in BA3, so those uh, hydrogens are negative. There exists borane, there exists carborane. So this is clusters of borane atom with some hydrogen. And in our institute, uh, a couple years ago, it was found by chance that the carborane, which are basically the system with borane and hydrogen, are uh, uh, potent uh, inhibitors of HIV. Carboranes are potent inhibitors of HIV. How it is possible? Such a crazy system, what is interesting there? It was found experimentally by Jan Konvalinka. OK, so this is very roughly the active site of HIV. This is a standard protein. And of course, you have a lot of hydrogens there. But please, those are the classical hydrogen. They are all positive. And now you enter the carborane inside. And carborane inside is only hydrogen outside. But please, these hydrogens are negative. So then you un understand why uh, carborane's strongly bound in active site of HIV protease, and this is the explanation why the carboranes and carboranes are good inhibitors against HIV. So this was extension of the hydrogen bond. So this is the, uh, it was old and still a, a new story, and I would like to pass to another story, which is about not older than 10 years, and this is the halogen bond. X means halogen, chlorine, bromine, uh, iodine and sometimes even fluorine. Again, experiment is very, very beginning, X-ray. And it was found that, uh, that if the, uh, if the uh, uh, halogen is bound, halogen is X, for, for example, to, 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 to carbon, then very close distance was found with electron donors like oxygen, nitrogen, and so on. So this distance was very close. Please, very close, it means much closer than some of Van der Waals radii. This is every time the criterion. This is contraintuitive, because this is electronegative element. This is electronegative as well. If it is electronegative, of course, it must be minus charge here. It must have minus charge here as well. How is it possible that they bound together? This is nonsense. Well, this was fun experimentally. It exists. Many of them exist. And the explanation was, again, even by theory, so I am proud that I am a statistician. So, and it was uh, very interesting. So, uh, carbon bromine. It was really found that at the belt of the bromine, there is a negative electrostatic potential. But at the top, here at the top of the uh, uh, bond, you have the clear area, clear positive area, which is called sigma hole. Sigma hole is positive and is very large. And now, if you have this model, then you understand why the bromine bound to electronegative element uh, bound so strongly to electron donors. So carbon, bromine, oxygen, for example, this bond is very strong. This is stronger than hydrogen bond. If the hydrogen bond is about 5, you can, can go to 10 or even to 15 kilocalories per mole. It's very strong, but what is even more important is much more linear. In case of hydrogen bond, you remember that it should be linear. But you know, the linearity is, let's say, plus minus 60 or 70 degrees from 180. In this case, 
this is really linear. The, hal the halogen bond is really linear, and here we have, let's say, plus minus uh, the 20 degree. How to explain this strange, strange behavior that at the one atom, we have area with negative and positive charge? Please, if you are making the molecular mechanics calculation sometimes, you know that the dogma of molecular mechanics is that if you have a uniform charge around the atom, I am trying to say that this is not true. I am saying this is the charge is not uniformly uh, uh, surrounded about around halogen. Again, calculations uh, uh, show immediately what is behind. So this is the carbon <laughs> bromine bond. Here we have the z axis, and we calculate the uh, distribution of the electron and the halogen. So please, at a heavy halogen, forget what you learn in chemistry. Hybridization is not valid. Hybridization is valid in the first period. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Not here. So here we have a s orbital and clearly separated p orbital. At the halogen, we have seven electrons each. So now we have s2 and p5. They are not hybridized. And we have p5, it means px2. Py2 and Pz1. This is the result of calculation. Let's go here. That's x, that's y. So here are two electrons, here are two electrons. And at the z axis, we have just one electron. But please, this electron is needed for the covalent bonding between bromine and carbon. So it means here, now it is missing. And here we have a positive hole. So very easy, very, very easy QM calculation showing what is behind the, the what is behind uh, the halogen bond, why it is uh, so so uh, so important, and let's go immediately about, uh, about applications, uh, material science, enormous application, but even the even the uh, chemistry and even the uh, pharmacology, pharmacology just one example. It is now known that about 40 in 40 percent of the new drugs, there is included halogen. In 40 percent of the new drugs, there is a halogen. There are some some biological explanation for the role of halogen in the drugs, but one very strong one is that the halogen bond could strongly uh, increase the uh, bonding between active site and uh, and the uh, ligand. <coughs> and okay, so we are talking here about the halogen bond and. Uh, hydrogen bond and di hydrogen bond just for a symmetry let's talk about here the di halogen bond this will be the last last very short one so once again the halogen bond is if we have a, a halogen is bound to the electronegative element and we have an electron donor for example this one or nitrogen <coughs> why here we have a lone pairs, and here we have a positive uh, sigma hole. But now please imagine that you have that you have uh, two, two two halogens, so something like uh, bromine, which is here plus, and the rest is minus. If you now approach the another halogen from above, Like this one, so here you have a, a sigma hole, and you can bound this one. So basically, you can form within one complex one one uh, 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 dihalogen bond and one one halogen bond. All of these we can found in, in in the experiment. All of these are very important because they are strongly uh, uh, directional. They are very important because they are tunable. You can by by uh, putting here. So if you have a, a bromomethane like this one, you have some important uh, sigma hole here. It means it makes strong complexes with electron donor. But if you put here fluorines, so you tuned the, the halogen bond, and the uh, sigma hole became much, much stronger. It means the bonding of the, such a system with electron donor, like ammonia, water, and so on, is much, much stronger. And this property could be very easily used in material chemistry as well as in uh, protein ligand interaction. And the halogen, halogen became now one of the most uh, uh, fashionable uh, uh, in the application in these materials and, and uh, uh, biological science. My 20 minutes is over, so thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>